History Institutes now, the first one of the system was the International Rice Research Institute, which you organized and which you headed until you retired. And uh, now there's uh, 18 of them. There was for many years 14 and uh, 13, 13 and it's moved up to 18 now. But uh, also, that first institute led to the establishment as a second afterthought in Mexico of the corn and wheat yeah. uh, international became, center. Became cement after the pro program. And yes. it happened because of a visit of the president of Mexico who was visiting Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. And at the farewell banquet for those of us from the Rockefeller program saying we were being told goodbye mm -hmm. uh, in 1961, farewell dinner. The president stood to speak uh, as a thank you thing, and then he proceeded to tell about his recent visit to Southeast China, or Southeast Asia. And among the visits, places he stopped was the Philippines. Yes. And then when he was there, the president insisted that he accompany him to a place of this new Rice Research Institute. And he told us about the director there was an American by the name of Chandler, and there was tremendous activity and beautiful laboratories, but everybody working out in the paddy plots also. And he said, it's, I didn't know until I was leaving that the director said, you know, the first seeds of these kinds of programs were sown in Mexico, and I, meaning you, Bob Chandler, yeah. was there. Yeah. And Lopez, President Lopez Mateo said, that being the case, I insist, even though we're saying goodbye tonight, uh, that we find <coughs> some way so that an international institute of that caliber yeah. or something approaching it can be established here in Mexico on wheat and maize, where we have demonstrated that a lot of impact has been made so that we, the people of Mexico, can invite young scientists from other countries to come and train here at this international institute that will come to be, I hope, and in so doing, repay for some of the benefits that we have received from the Rockefeller Foundation Mexican government program that we're saying goodbye yeah. to tonight. I remember President Mateo Lopez, Lopez Mateo's visit very, very well. And uh, uh, I didn't realize, I didn't quite know what you just told. I didn't realize he carried it back quite that well. He but, said it at and the and very tell you, dinner. Let me tell you a funny story <laughs> that happened at that when he was here. He had an entourage with him. Oh, yes. Yeah, oh. people. And I was sitting by one of their ministers at luncheon that we had a luncheon for him, of course, that day. And, and uh, I was speaking to him in Spanish, in my poor Spanish, because I didn't know how much was. Finally, I said to him, uh, I was thinking me, maybe he spoke better English than I did Spanish, so I said, uh, well, he was uh, I'm good English. Good. English. He said, a little. And, and I said, uh, well, when did, so to make conversation, I said, when did you leave Mexico? Oh, I leave there all my life. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, so I went back to Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> well, it's curious how all of these things unfolded. Bob and you and I were among the pioneers that had this wonderful experience. Yeah. Caring one step farther about how that uh, comment of Lopez Mort uh, Mateos mm. uh, in the farewell dinner, he said, I insist we find a way. And the Mexican government will do its part make this happen. Oh. It was four years before the papers were signed, and I have a picture that I, yeah. that I value very mm -hmm. highly, mm -hmm. where Dr., the late Dr. George Herrar uh, and President Adolfo Lopez Mateo yeah. were signing the paper for the establishment of, of CIMA, of CIMA yeah. which was 1964.